What is up? I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video today. I'm going to be talking with you guys about my first impressions after unboxing and building this guy. This is the Tron XY X1 3D printer kit from Gearbest. They did send this out for the purpose of review, full disclosure, but that will have no sway on uh, my impressions of this guy. This is a hundred and approximately twenty to one hundred and fifty dollar 3D printer kit, depending on what type of flash shells are going on. And I will have a coupon code in the description where you guys will be able to pick this up at a discounted rate. Keep in mind, it is a low price kit. So as we'll talk about, it's going to take some setup time, uh, some build time, and it's going to take some tinkering in order to get a uh, higher quality print out of it. But without much further ado, I will take you through the entire process of unboxing, building it and doing some first print. All right, so getting into the unboxing, it was packed pretty well. It had some nice uh, dense foam that everything was packed in, everything was organized. The kit includes a small coil of white PLA filament, just enough to get you started. Pretty much all the tools that you'll need to assemble the printer, including a Phillips and flathead screwdriver, three different sized Allen keys, a two-sided metal wrench, a standard B to A USB cable, a bundle of three in-stop switches, a laptop style 12 volt, five amp power brick, and to stop right there, I thought that was pretty interesting seeing them using this nice, safe, enclosed uh, power brick. A lot of lower end kits tend to come with a normal style PSU, but uh, require you to hook up all the voltage and you'll be dealing with, uh, depending on where you live, 120 to 240 uh, mains voltage, which can be honestly a little dangerous. So having this little uh, brick can be a nice touch in terms of you know, if this is aimed at somebody um, younger who you don't want messing with that type of high voltage. Moving on, we've got the LCD ribbon cable, a 3D printed Z motor mount. That's the only 3D printed parts in this kit. Then we've got the micro SD card with a USB reader. Now that actually comes preloaded with your instructions and different manuals. It has a sample G code file for you to print on there. It also comes with Pettier Host. I would download that straight from the website and it has all the drivers on there as well. Moving along, we also have three binder or bulldog clips for the bed surface. We have the print surface itself, which is this interesting kind of flexible fiberglass plate. I haven't seen that used on anything, I believe, XY uses it on a few of their printers, but being flexible is nice so you can pop prints off easily. Again, this isn't a heated bed, so you're gonna have to use something like glue stick uh, when you're doing prints with this printer, but um, very, you know, kind of unique thing there. Then we've got a number of laser cut acrylic parts. They're all covered in that brown stuff, which I absolutely hate. And these are mostly used for the base, different mounts and the control box. We've got four stepper motors. There were actually three different models that came packaged in my kit. And they actually already had the couplers, gears, and pulleys attached to them. Now, I thought that was a good thing initially, um, you know, meaning that you wouldn't have to put those on or identify which motor was which. Uh, because the instructions didn't really go into that, but um, it turned out to be not so great of a thing. I just trusted that they were the right ones, and as you'll find out later, that wasn't the case. Next up, we had the already pre-assembled extruder hot end. Note that there's no print fan on this printer. We have the US three-prong grounded power cable. This will differ depending on the model that you get or you know the different variation that you get for your country. But as Angus on Makers Muse has pointed out, it's very, very important to make sure that you have a solid ground connection uh, for your 3D printer. The PSUs that run in them depend on that in order to not give off any voltage into the chassis. So yeah, keep that in mind. Next up, we had the stepper motor cables, which came labeled X, Y, Z, and extruder, which is very nice. Then we had a lot of nuts and bolts, and honestly, they were pretty well organized. I can't complain too much. Um, everything was organized in terms of M3, M5, M4 screws, M6 screws. Next up, we've got some cable management wrapping and zip ties. Then we've got the Bowden extruder assembly. We've got the metal Z-axis bracket. We've got a bag full of wheels, right angle brackets for the extrusion, the lead screw nut and associated hardware. Then we've got the handle and its hardware. This actually came with pre-assembled X and Y pulleys, which I guess is kind of nice. Then we've got the board. This comes with a Melzi 2.0 V5 Tron XY branded board. This uses the Atmega 12 84p and it also has integrated stepper drivers meaning you won't be able to upgrade them all that easily 
Then next we have the pre-assembled LCD which comes on a piece of the acrylic for the control box. Then we have the aluminum extrusions. These were wrapped in plastic but they were kind of covered in all these metal shavings which is a little annoying. I had to clean all those off to make sure I didn't get cut by them or anything like that. A lot of lower end uh, 3D printers they get the wrong wheels. They just go for the lowest, um, lowest price parts possible and they don't really match the wheels with the uh, proper extrusion but these are kind of based on the open uh, open builds model of extrusion and they seem to work pretty well so good on them for using those then finally we had the lead screw which is this kind of like really small I think it's maybe a m6 lead screw and yeah i'm kind of weird after i got everything unboxed i laid everything and nulled it out on the table i find it kind of therapeutic i also really like being able to see all the different parts laid out in front of me and match them up to the uh, very nice parts guide that they have where they go over all the parts. I can make sure everything is there and if I'm missing some stuff like screws, which I actually was missing two screws. So I, um, you know, luckily I had this um, set of metric screws on hand. I was able to note that like right away and not get to that step and find out that I'm missing screws and just be screwed. Uh, screwed screws okay a lot of American hardware stores don't carry that much of a variance of screws so I encourage you if you're gonna be doing kits like this to go ahead and buy some hex head and Phillips head because this uses mostly Phillips head uh, metric screws they've got sets for like $20 and especially if you're gonna be buying multiple of these things and tinkering and adding removing parts having these can be a lifesavers so after that um, I went on to building the printer first talking about the the manual it was actually pretty pretty good um, uh, it's a digital manual as I mentioned there is a parts guide and a uh, setup guide um, in addition to the assembly guide and it, it was pretty good it's a bit Englishy at parts uh, a couple times it wasn't the clearest but the photos were pretty good and I was able to move through most of the steps without issue really really happy with that there is a video that I believe Tron XY actually put out on their YouTube channel which um, kind of guides you through it's a 3d style video and it guides you through the entire build process there are multiple versions of this printer so depending on when and where you buy it you might have one or the other so uh, take that with a grain of salt always refer to the instructions RTFM and but over, overall I think most people will be able to get this put together without too much of a problem. Altogether this took me about four hours to build and that's while I was filming and taking a ton of pictures um, just to have as references and things like that and I think the average person would probably be able to get this put together in that four hours or even quicker if you're not having to worry about any of that stuff. It's mostly you know T-nuts and bolts and I have learned um, after doing this that I don't like those hammerhead style T-nuts. Um, they're kind of the kind for the open extrusion or the open um, builds that you just push in and turn and they rotate and catch. But you know, there's a lot on here where you can't actually see what's happening. So you have to kind of like feel it out and just rotate it in weird angles and stuff like that. I'm not a fan of those. I prefer the ones that you just kind of like put on the screw and slot in. But I guess the ones that you can insert to give you a little bit more flexibility into the order that you can put stuff in. But in terms of the quality of the parts, uh, again, I can't bag on it too much for being, you know, almost as low as a hundred dollar printer. The extrusions were very nice besides the filings. Everything came together, so I, I can't complain too much. The belts are a little kind of plasticky. I believe that they're still reinforced. Um, they don't stretch at all, which I guess is good. They're just not the kind of rubber GT2 belts that I've used for other type of kinematics projects and stuff like that. So um, there was that one 3D printed part and it was good in of itself. Um, there is a, pro a little bit of a problem with alignment with the uh, lead screw and that was kind of my first major problem that I ran to uh, with doing this and it's a problem that pretty much everybody who buys this printer notes that you will have. Basically the alignment for um, the motor, coupler, lead screw, and coupler nut um, aren't perfect and this ain't uh, right angle brackets and um, I kind of ran into this problem of getting the printer all assembled and then all wired up and testing it out and the z-axis wouldn't move and it was binding up too much the the alignment was too far off and so what people recommended was doing a few things you can try to bend this bracket a little bit which will help decrease some of the slop that causes it to bind up another thing which i decided to do was to actually loosen um, the little coupler on here you can loosen the screws a little bit and that'll give it a little bit of play enough for it to be able to move up and down I chose to go ahead and do that and it was enough 
to uh, allow the Z-axis to move freely finally, um, you know, with me turning it uh, and with the motor driving it. But um, yeah, that's a little frustrating, but as far as I can tell, it's something that pretty much everybody has to deal with. The next kind of problem I ran into happened to be with for the XZ carriage and for the Y carriage. Um, basically, their tolerances aren't great and um, it, it, it means that there's going to end up being some slop. As you can see, I don't have much here, but when I first did it, I'll try to have some B-roll. There was a lot of slop in this, and there's still a little bit of slop in this. And you have a couple options to get that out. First is to just do it by hand, and when you're tightening up these uh, three points and the four points down there, you squeeze the spacers and wheels as far in as you can possibly can, and then tighten it down. And that's what I chose to do for this initial run, was to do that, and it squeezes it to the extrusion so it takes out a lot of that play. You have to tighten them pretty tight, and you do run the risk of possibly um, over tightening it and messing up some of your, especially the acrylic um, or stripping your screws. So it's not, I don't think, a great permanent solution, but it was enough for me to get printing. As you can see, I was able to get um, some decent quality prints. Even with that, your second option is to replace the spacers with some um, eccentric uh, spacers or screws. I decided not to do that just because I didn't have any on hand. I've actually purchased some just so I have some because I do plan on doing um, quite a few 3D printer builds. Um, but you know, with those eccentric screws, they're basically a non-concentric screw. So, sorry. Um, so the, the hole is offset and when you turn it, it will move um, the wheel closer or farther away from the extrusion and that way you can tune it so it doesn't bind up too much and it runs smoothly without too much play. The third option is actually these, which I've already printed but I haven't put on because I try to keep the printers as stock as possible. Um, you know, I have to play it by ear. Sometimes you have to do a mod in order to get the printer to print well, especially at these low price points. But I, I try to run it as stock as possible because a lot of people won't have a 3D printer to print these on and they might not be able to get a print out of their print printer initially. So I'm, I'm trying not to use any, um, especially 3D printed parts. Um, just keep that in mind. But uh, basically this heightens the uh, the wheels to the extrusion. It basically makes up for the lack of tolerances. Yeah, optimally this wouldn't be uh, a worry. You wouldn't have to worry about this. Hopefully Tron XY and further revisions will be able to get that play out of the printer out of the box. But for a $100 printer, I'm gonna say it's within you know the realm of expectation for me personally. Um, I, I was going into this assuming I was gonna have these type of problems. A couple did arise, but I was able to get over them, and I think most people will be able to get over them and get the printer built. So that said, I did end up replacing this motor mount, as I mentioned, just because um, this one, the tolerances were just causing me to have to do stuff like loosen the coupler and I didn't want to do that for a long period of time. So I did replace that motor mount. That was one of the first 3D prints I did after doing a few test prints. Um, and obviously it was able to print it and uh, the tolerances are fairly good. So yeah. So in terms of the electronics, I think honestly the hardest part is probably doing the cable management. Um, I went ahead and did it, but I would advise you to put it off until you are sure that the machine is fully working. Um, that all your electronics and all your kinematics are working and if you're going to be doing anything like adding a print fan uh, or other modifications like maybe a heated bed I leave that off as well um, I've already done it up on this upper portion I actually did the lower portion but took it off when I rebuilt the machine and I'm gonna have to undo this when I put on the print fan but also when I um, cut the Bowden tube that's one of the few mods I've done so far is cutting that uh, just because it was way too long and the longer your Bowden tube is the harder time you're gonna have with retraction and a lot of people note that they have under extrusion with um, Bowden tube extruders especially on lower end printers like this so uh, it was like t almost twice as long as this and that's completely unnecessary the um, you know the full length uh, is about that so as long as you don't cut it so that there are any like two extreme angles you should be fine most people recommend you cut off at least one to two inches so you might just want to do that up front um, but the control box was fairly straightforward there was nothing the most annoying part was peeling off all the damn acrylic some people just leave that on um, or the covering for the acrylic some people like to leave it on but I hate the way it looks but I also hate peeling it off so that was about a good 25 minutes like the first 25 minutes of that four hours was just peeling off that um, all that acrylic but that goes together pretty easily it uses these little um, cap 
non-captive nuts that you have to kind of hold in there and screw into place and um, everything you know all the electronics are keyed you can't put stuff into the wrong spot um, you can hook the wrong motor up to the wrong um, control uh, driver but the worst that's gonna happen is it just the printer's not gonna print but it's not gonna blow anything up you can plug the fan into the wrong port etc but if you follow the instructions you should be good on the electronics here's where I ran into my next problem the original board I got with this printer was faulty it was pretty much bricked out of the box. I went through a pretty exhaustive troubleshooting process. Um, got a lot of help from the forums, as I mentioned, the Facebook groups. Um, Preston from Press Reset helped me out, and my buddy, my coworker, uh, David Bates, who um, is one of the people who's helped me get into 3D printing, helped me diagnose some things as well. Um, I tried hooking it up to Repetitor Host. Uh, I was able to get it to, like, um, show up on the computer but repetitor host was never able to actually talk to it uh, a lot of people thought it just might not have had firmware on there i tried um and arduino isp um in order to get um a bootloader on there and try to burn the firmware on there but there was just nothing doing there's an led that should turn on when you um power up the board and that wasn't turning on for me um there's also a jumper on here for switching it from uh, using the 12 volt source to the 5 volts from a USB um, so that's something to be aware of but yeah I don't think that this is going to be typical of everybody um, I think I've heard of maybe one other person on the Facebook groups who got a board that was bricked out of the box and unfortunately I can't tell you what the RMA process is like since I got this for a review I went ahead and just bought another board from a USA vendor that I knew would get here quickly um, that took about a week for me to get to get one from Gearbest would have probably taken up to like two two weeks so I just wanted to get on with the build and so I bought another board I think it was 25 or 30 bucks so that sucks obviously it's not um, something you want to have to go through but again with kits especially um, it, it's something that you should uh, try to be ready for um, don't expect it but if, if it happens just um, know how to deal with it know how to hook it up to your PC use repetitor host and get on the Facebook groups in order to try to get it sorted out so um, the problem I ran into was that the uh, LCD would come on but it would just be all uh, black bricks kind of um, and uh, none of the controls responded I didn't get any beeping out of the machine or anything like that so yeah, unfortunately I had to wait a little while to get it back in, but once I got the new board set up, I was able to um, hook it up and the LCD turned on. But then I realized that the new board had Tron T XY or Tron XY X3 firmware on there, so I had to go through the process of burning that. That wasn't that big of a deal. I just had to find a copy of it. Um, I didn't want to compile from source because I wanted the exact version that everybody else who will be receiving this printer will get and um, I got that burned on there. So obviously not something that you're gonna wanna have to deal with, but um, it, I'm just trying to give you guys my straightforward uh, you know, explanation of everything I had to do with this printer. So once I got the new firmware on there, I was able to check all of the kinematics and everything worked. I was able to move and home all the X, Y, and Z axes and um, then I was able to get ready for the first print. So bed leveling and filament loading, I gotta say, are pretty straightforward. It's got, you know, a four point uh, spring bed leveling system and you're gonna have to play around with your Z end stop a little bit in order to get the right Z offsets. So basically I tighten these all the way down, um, moved the uh, Z down until it was um, about a quarter inch away from that and then moved the end stop so that it was compressed up against it and then untighten it and, and did all the bed loving like you normally do on these type of 3D printers and then I had to just kind of adjust it and stop a little bit so that it was in the right spot. You also do have to worry about these binder clips, the placement of these. Um, typically when you do home all three axes, it's going to home the X, home the Y, and then home the Z. So if you have um, a belt uh, binder clip right here, it could knock it off. Um, yeah, so just something to be aware of with that. So loading filaments is pretty straightforward. This is actually the first Bowden extruder I've uh, done a lot of work with. So um, I was a little nervous about it, but it's nothing to be nervous about. 
Uh, you know, you pinch the lever. I found that this spring is pretty good. I saw some people talking about the spring not um, making good contact with the, the gear, but on mine, it works fine. Um, I do notice that it occasionally um, doesn't feed all that great, and that has to do with the under extrusion, but um, I, I, it's good enough to get these prints. So that's, that's saying a good amount. Um, I did have a problem when changing filaments after that first start, uh, roll of uh, spool that they give you, the sample spool ran out. Um, you know, you heat up the uh, extruder, you push it down a little bit, and then you pull it out. And when it got to this point right here, it kind of got stuck in there. So I kind of had to take it apart. Um, I've had this roll of, spool of filament on there since then, and I haven't had to unload it, but it's, that can probably become a little bit of an annoyance if you have to deal with it. Um, we'll see if I find a solution for it by the time I do my final review. And that's where I ran into my next problem, but it's all kind of tied together with uh, having to get the replacement board. Um, basically, when I did my first print, which was this guy, you can see it's about a quarter the height it actually should be. This is the next print I got after I got the problem solved. And the issue was that um, in my firmware, my steps per millimeter for the Z axis were set to uh, 400. And apparently for this lead screw pitch, they need to be actually at uh, 1600. So I was able to do that with Repetier Host, which I had already gotten familiar with. Um, so yeah, it's just something to keep in mind if you get a replacement board. You're gonna have to use glue stick as I mentioned with this. I tried it without glue stick with you know just simple prints like this and um, it would oftentimes make it like halfway through the prints. I think I printed a 3D Benchy um, and that made it halfway through the prints and then it just attached. So I tried it twice and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna use glue stick. And for the most part, things have printed pretty well. Um, I did have a couple that have detached and a couple that have kind of warped up from the bed. I gotta say the prints aren't perfect by any means, but I'm fairly impressed that, especially after all I went through to get the printer printing, it, it prints pretty well. Um, some under extrusions, some surface defects, some um, nasty zits and seam lines and things like that, but it, it gets through prints really, really well. Case in point, this is Angus from Maker Muse's uh, kind of torture test of a, a Christmas tree lattice. He put this out right around the holidays and it was right when I was uh, putting this together. So I had gone through some other prints and I was like, you know what, let's try it. This guy doesn't have a um, print fan. So I actually got a desk fan and um, you know, sat it beside it and ran it and it printed the thing. And I was like, what? I posted it on Instagram. I was really, really surprised. No print fan. This is my Maker Select Plus, a $400 printer. And it's known for having the not best um, uh, printing fan shroud and I printed it at a slightly higher temperature um, and it failed. It recovered, but it failed. This printed this straight out of the box with the cheapest PLA I've ever bought. I think that's a $10 spool of PLA and, and it printed it perfect. So then I was like, you know what? Let's try it without the assistance of a fan. And it printed it again. No, obviously I've got some setting issues with my, my WANHOW or um, MonoPrice. But the fact that this printed this twice without a cooling fan, that's phenomenal. I can't believe that it was able to do this. So um, I think it speaks to the potential that this printer has for um, you know, a, a tinkering machine and a, and a platform to really learn about 3D printing. So um, I, I think it's gonna be good for some people who have that low, low budget price points, but um, want to get into 3D printing. I definitely have to say that I am not impressed with the interface on these. I do not like these horrible, horrible um, clicky buttons um, that a lot of times you feel like you're clicking them, but they won't actually register. Um, and there's some things about the interface, like in order to disable all the stepper motors, you have to go through a lot of menus and you have to unmount and mount the SD card. And it's got these silly transitions on there that just take up time and, you know, don't add to the user experience whatsoever. But that said, it's a $100 3D printer, a little bit over a $100 3D printer. So it prints structurally fairly well. Um, these aren't falling apart or anything like that, but I just want to get rid of some of these surface defects and have some more consistent extruding. And I will be very, very happy with this guy. So we'll see if I'm able to get that done. But yeah, that's been my first impressions of this printer in conclusion. For $110, um, 
I, I think if you're looking to get in at that price point, this is a good option for you. Um, it's a relatively small printer. It's relatively portable. Um, it's good experience, you know, for all I had to go through to get this printer up and running, I'm much better for it and I will be ready if I run into any of those problems with other printers I'm doing. And um, it's, it was actually, you know, an interesting experience. Frustrating, but um, I was able to get through it and I think most people will too. So that is it for this first impressions and unboxing and build of this printer. I'm gonna be putting it through even more of its paces before my final review. Um, if you want to see some other 3D printed content from me, check out my review of the Monoprice Maker Select Plus and we'll be having more 3D printing content on the channel. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down, but leave some feedback in the comments. What do you think of this printer? What is your price range for a printer? Are you considering this one whatsoever? Um, go ahead and follow me on all my different social media sites. I've got them linked in the description and I post updates on what I'm printing and all this type of stuff. Like a little bit of behind the scenes, so if you wanna see more of that, go ahead and follow me. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and want to see more 3D printing content and other technical related stuff or technology related stuff. I do uh, PC builds and unboxings and tutorials and stuff like that. Thank you guys again for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.